good afternoon to everyone. Please remember you are here by choice, not by force. So if you have any questions, if you're not following, please let me know so that we can um, go over anything that you may not be understanding fully. So the last week's Saturday's class was already recorded and uploaded. So if you missed that, you can watch it also. Um, this week's recording will be, um, this week's class will be recorded also. So if you miss anything or you know anyone that might be interested, they're going to be in the classroom also. All right, so basically where we stopped off last week, um, Saturday, was at chapter 1.4. We looked at all the information in this chapter here. So what we're going to start with is chapter 1.5. We are going to be looking at secondary storage. So um, we're basically going to be continuing um, this diagram here. So we have some more information to add to it on the storage section of it. So, what is secondary storage? Well, secondary storage basically refers to media and basically any method that you're going to use to store your programs, store your data, store your information. And uh, notice you're storing it for later use. So secondary storage is a method of storing your data for later use. Now you have two types of storage. You have secondary storage and you have primary storage. Is there a chapter on primary storage? No. Um, yes, there is a chapter. So primary memory is actually your primary storage. So, if we go to our chart on the storage, storage media, we are going to have um, types of storage. So, we're going to add a branch. We're going to have primary storage. And we're going to also have secondary storage. Give me a second. As I was saying, we have two types of storage. We have primary and secondary storage. Now, what is the difference between the two types of storage? The difference is how long, basically, are they going to store data? Your secondary storage is going to store your data permanently. So, any device or any method of storing your data that the same day, weeks after, months after, years after, you can still see the data, that is secondary storage. So, do you guys know of any device that you can put data on it and months would pass and you would still see data on it?
left drive, that is correct. Hard drives. Very good. Flash drive, hard drive, your CD, DVD, basically anything that allows you to permanently store your data. That is secondary storage. And primary storage now is basically storage that is temporary. So that is your main memory. That is the uh, um, chapter on primary memory that we looked at. Remember those three terms? We have primary memory, we have RAM, we have memory, and we have main memory. So those three terms, they refer to the same hardware and it's also called primary storage. So on the primary storage in our diagram, we could add our RAM. You can say RAM slash main memory. So in this chapter here, we're going to be looking at um, our secondary storage now. So secondary storage media, are you guys following so far though? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So secondary storage media, it keeps your data, it keeps your instructions, your information on the physical hardware of the computer for future use. As I said, it's for permanent storage. So we have some examples here, your hard disk or your hard drive, compact disk or CD, tape. Those are all examples, tape or cassette, we call them cassettes. So those are all examples of secondary storage. Now what is a storage device? A storage device is what records and retrieves the data. Any instruction, information, to and from the storage media. So we actually looked at this already. We're going to look at it again. We have two terms here. We have storage device and we have storage media. Anyone wants to explain the example? Try to explain it. What is the difference? No one? All right. So what is the difference between the two? The difference between the two, say you have a computer. This here is a computer here. This is a desktop computer. So, so this is your desktop. And this here is a flash drive. So a flash drive. And it has data on it. Now, your flash drive is going to be what is called a storage device, storage media, sorry, is storage media. Where did my painting go? Yes, your flash drive is going to be called a storage media. And one, when it connects to the computer, when it connects to the computer, it's going to connect to what is called a storage device. Now, a flash drive doesn't technically have a storage device, but this is an example of a storage media and a storage device. A more, another example is going to be this CD tray that you have here. This here is going to be your storage device. And your storage media is going to be a CD. So when you're transferring data now to that storage device, the data is on the storage media. So the storage media is what stores the data. Media is what is storing the data. And the device is what transfers the data. 
So for example, with the CD, if you did not have a CD player, or basically a CD storage device, then you could not transfer the data from the CD to the computer. Do you guys understand the difference between the two? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, what are examples of storage devices? We have the hard disk drive, compact disk drive, and tape drive. If you notice at the very end, they are ending with the word drive. That is indicating it is a storage device. Storage devices, which transfers the data, ends with the word drive at the end of it. That's how you can remember the difference. So, hard disk are storage media. You have it simplified here. A hard disk is a storage media. Whereas the hard disk drive is the storage device. So it's important to have media and method to store data and programs when a computer is turned off. Secondary storage can be generally grouped into local storage and cloud-based storage. So we can add that to our diagram. So secondary storage, under secondary, we're going to have two methods of storing our data. We can store our data locally, so we call that local storage, or we can store our data in the cloud. So we call that cloud-based storage. Good. Here's a question. When something is in the cloud, as a phrase that we use, something is in the cloud, what do we basically mean? Does anyone know? Anyone ever heard that phrase though? It's in the cloud? Sir, does it mean we um, stored, stored something, something online, online, like, you know, online, online storage? Right. That is actually it. It means you're storing something online. Um, and when we say online, we mean, uh, what do we basically mean when we say online? The internet, right? So, when we use that word online, we're basically referring to the internet. So cloud-based storage basically means storing our data on the internet. Now, for those who might be interested in knowing what exactly is cloud-based storage, cloud-based storage is basically storing your data on somebody else's computer. That is actually cloud-based storage. So for you to understand how cloud-based storage work, you need to understand how the internet work. Does anybody know how the internet work? No one? All right, so, no, not that image. Um, this image? Not that one. We're gonna, we're gonna use this one. All right, so, I'm gonna explain what is the internet, and uh, with that now, we can try to understand what is cloud-based storage. So, the internet. What is the internet and uh, how do we get connected to the internet? The internet is basically 
um, computers around the world being connected to each other. So if I copy, copy that to paste it here. So the internet, say for example, I am here and uh, um, Dravid is over here, um, Chelsea is over here, uh, Erica is over here. So we're just using these four persons for now. So the internet is basically when I have a connection from my computer to Dravid's computer. And Dravid has a connection to Erica's computer and Erica has a connection to Chelsea's computer. Chelsea has a connection to my computer. And it can go the other way also. Chelsea has a connection to Dravid computer. And it goes back and forth like that. So everybody is basically interconnected. And that is basically the internet. When you, your computer has a connection to somebody else's computer around the world, forming one large connection, everybody's basically connected to each other. That is basically the internet. You guys think you understand that? Yes, sir. Great. Now, cloud-based storage now. Say I have a file. I have a file here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to store it on the cloud. But technically, it's actually somebody else's computer. So Erica, at the bottom here, she has her computer. And I'm going to store this file now onto her computer. She's offering me a service, basically. It's called a cloud-based um, service, whereby I can take my file and store it onto her computer. And that is basically cloud-based storage. When you store your computer on the cloud, we mean storing it on the internet. And the internet is basically when everybody is connected to each other. So technically, you are storing it on somebody else's computer around the world. Now, cloud-based storage is usually offered by companies. Like, for example, Google, Microsoft, and so on. So, it's usually a company that would be storing your data, and not just some random person on the internet. It's usually a company that you would use as a cloud-based storage. You guys following all that? Yes, sir. Anyone with any questions? Anyone wants me to go back explaining that? Or are you guys clear? Clear, sir. All right, so only one person responding, not sure why. Good, so the two storage methods that we have is local storage and cloud-based storage. So I just explained that cloud-based basically means that it's being stored on the internet and it's on somebody else's computer. Now we have local storage. The word local, what does the word local basically mean? When you hear something is local. It's in the area, in your country. Right, it's an area, it's something close to you. So local storage is basically something that is near to you, physically. So cloud is basically the opposite. The storage is not near you. Whereas local storage, the storage is right near you. So it could be inside of your computer, it could be inside of your phone, it can be on a flash drive, it can be on a CD, and it is nearby to you physically. So that is what we mean by local storage and cloud-based storage. So let's look at more about local storage. So local storage involves users having to store, sorry, local storage involves users having storage devices 
or media with data in their possession. So it's right near them or generally knowing the location. So you know where the data is physically located. That's what it means by local storage. So what are some of these storage devices? Well, the different types of storage can generally be categorized into three different categories. We have magnetic media, we have optical media or optical disc, and we have flash memory. So if we continue our diagram on the local storage, we're going to have magnetic media. We're going to have um, optical disc, and we're going to have flash memory. Now, even though it's basically the same for your cloud-based storage, so don't think it's different. It's actually the same. Because remember, as I explained, it's the same as though somebody is using a computer around the world. So it's the same type of storage they are going to use. So the same magnetic storage, the same optical storage, the same flash storage, they are going to use to offer this cloud-based storage to you. So what are some examples of magnetic media? Well, you have magnetic tape, you have hard drive. Examples of optical disc, you have CD-ROM, CD-R, DVD, Blu-ray, and flash memory. It's basically anything that uses flash storage. Or, as we learned last week, Saturday, hybrid memory. Flash is basically hybrid memory. So, I told you guys about your flash drive, your SD card. Those are all examples of flash memory. So, magnetic memory or magnetic media. Why do we use this media? It's actually the cheapest. And what are some examples? We have magnetic tape and hard disk. So what is a magnetic tape used for? So, or what does a magnetic tape look like? You can check that out first. So a magnetic tape. So this is what a magnetic tape would look like. You guys should be familiar with the traditional cassettes, but in a computer, it would look more like these here. This would be an example of one in um, its enclosure. So the magnetic tape, what is it mainly used for? It's mainly used for backing up data. Anybody know what backing up data basically means? To store it. Okay. To store it, yes. And you store it for what purpose? So if you want to transfer it to another device, you would be able to? Okay. Anyone else? Sorry to recall Sorry to... you lost it. Oh. You might lost it. Yeah. That's actually the main reason why we back up data. To recover the data if we ever lose the data. That's why we back up. So it's like what you guys do on your phone all the time. Um, Google Drive is always backing up. Your WhatsApp um, um, chats is always backing up. Um, your Google Photos are always backing up. So it helps to, if you ever lose data, you can recover some of the data you may have lost. So that's why we back up data. But when you back up, you have to get somewhere to store the data. So one of the methods of backing up our data, of storing that backup, backed up data, is using a magnetic tape. And because they are a cheap method of storage, that is why it is used for backing up. So backing up the tape is vital for a comp, um, computer network and organization or business 
which needs to store important and large amounts of data. So when we have to store large amounts of data, we would use that magnetic tape. So this is another example of it here. Now what is this magnetic tape? It's basically a narrow strip of plastic coated with ferrous oxide. Um, the data is recorded along the length of the tape. So along the length, it goes along the length. Remember width would be across this way. So it goes across um, along the length. So with each symbol encoded in binary form across the width of the tape. So we already know it's binary, right? Zeros and ones. So that is what will be encoded upon the tape. A bunch of zeros and ones, symbols for that, will be on the length of the tape. So it might look something like this here. So it might be zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, something like that across the length of the tape. So it is unique since data can only be retrieved in the same order which it was stored. You can only retrieve the data in the order it was stored. Does anyone know what this means? I guess you will know if you um if you ever used a tape before. Anyone ever played a tape before? A cassette? No one? No, sir. So all of you are very young. So how the tape used to work is that when you want to go to a certain part of the tape, you have to fast forward that part of the tape. It's not like how we can um, open a folder, like how we can open a folder on our computer and we have a list of music and we can basically select which music we want to play or which part of a movie we want to play. We could not have done that with a cassette. So say we wanted to start playing a movie at 30 minutes. We couldn't have just told the cassette player to start playing at 30 minutes. What we have to do, the cassette, if it started at, um, say for example, zero seconds at the very beginning, we have to fast forward that cassette all the way to 30 minutes. So you have to wait until it fast forward until this time here, and then you can start playing it. So what this part here is telling you that the order that you put the data in is the order you have to view the data. So before you can, uh, this line here, it says that before you can retrieve the 50th piece of data, you must access the 49th piece. So you must go in that order. You must look at piece number one all the way to piece number 49 before you can look at piece number 50 of that cassette. You guys think you understand how it works? So sir, um, if you like wanted to fast forward it, you have to listen from the start again until it restarted? Exactly. Uh, so, that's okay. the so that's the struggle we went through back then when we had cassettes. So if we number it like this here, if we number it like this, um, if I wanted to see this 10 piece of data, I had to go through everything here, all the way from one to nine, and then I could see 10. But then, if, say for instance, you're looking at 10, and you stop at 10, so you stop here, when you play back the cassette, you will continue from 10. So say for instance, you want to restart the cassette, you actually have to go through everything in reverse. You have to rewind everything now, go through 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way back to 1. So... That's how cassettes used to work. That's how tapes work. You have to go through all of the data in order to um, reach to whichever part of it you want. You guys clear it up? 
Yes, sir. So, a bit of technical um, information. This is called sequential data. Sequential, did I spell that correctly? I hope I did. Sequential data. Sequential basically meaning one after each other. You gotta follow the order. So you gotta go one, two, three, four, five until you reach six. So this is called sequential data. I think it's mentioned. Yeah, let's continue. So the tape drive winds the tape from one end from one reel to another by passing the tape over a magnetic head. So the magnetic head is used to read the data, write the data, erase the data on the tape. So if you look at the very top, let's see, at the very top here, around this section here, I guess this tape doesn't have it. Um, I guess the tape drive might have the head. So as the tape passes at the top here, the magnetic head would um, read the information, write it or erase it, and so on. So what do we use to use the magnetic tape for? Well, it's primarily used for backing up your data. We already explained what backing up your data is. Um, now, it's a very slow process, creating, so that's why it says here, creating the backup is a slow process because you have to go through the entire tape. It's not that we can um, randomly put more information. We have to go through it one by one, step by step. So we have to go through one, two, three. So we can't put five things at the same time. It won't allow us. You have to go one by one, one piece by piece. And that made it a slow form of storage. Now your hard disk is the other form of magnetic storage. This is what you guys, a majority of you will have in your computer, your laptop or your desktop. So another common device that stores data is your magnetic disk. So we call it a magnetic disk. We call it a hard disk. We call it a hard drive. But why do we call it a magnetic disk? Does anyone know? No one? All right. The reason why we call it a magnetic disk is because if you ever looked inside of a hard drive, notice what you guys are seeing here. You're seeing a disk. So in all of these hard drives, you're noticing a disk. And it's a metal disk that is being used to store your data. So you can think of it like if your hard drive has multiple CDs inside of it. There are multiple CDs inside of your hard drive, and that is where the data is being stored upon. So that is why we call it a magnetic disk. So continuing, so all it is possible to add an external hard drive. So we know what the word external means. It means it's outside. So a hard drive can be outside of your computer. And we call that an external hard drive. And the ones inside of your computer, they're basically going to be internal hard drives. But we just simply call them hard drives. So Technically, the hard drive is the machinery that controls the motion of the hard disk within which contains the data, but most people use hard disk and hard drive interchangeably. So what they're basically saying here that the hard disk is basically referring to the disk that I showed you guys. This disk here. But 
because it's basically um, the entire where the data is being stored, they use the term interchangeably. So you can call it a hard disk or you can call it a hard drive. Are you guys following so far? Yes, sir. All right. Anyone, any questions? No? All right. So continue next paragraph. Hard disks are popular for use with computers and laptops since they store large amounts of data. So this is why we use hard drive. It is used for storing large amounts of data. This is why it is used in your computer to store data. Now, hard disk can range from 700 gigabytes to one terabyte um, in capacity. And external hard disks are now available in capacity and speed similar to the internal. And we all know today we can go farther than that. We can go two terabytes, four terabytes, and so on, in terms of internal, external, and so on. So those are your two examples of magnetic media your magnetic tape and your hard disk. Now your optical disk or your optical media, does anyone know what the word optical, what comes to mind when you hear optical? You can see it, see in. See in. Looking for another word. So I know it has something to do with lasers. Lasers, and what is basically a laser? Like light. 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 That is it. So that can help you to remember. So optical referring to light and magnetic referring to magnetic. So that is how the data is stored. That, that's why they have those um, terms, those titles. Magnetic meaning that the data is stored magnetically. So a magnetic tape or a hard drive stores their data magnetically. Have any of you ever heard person say that you should never put a magnet near your hard drive? No. No? Yes, sir. Okay, one person did, good. Well, that is because your hard drive is actually storing its data magnetically. So if you put another magnet near another magnet, it's going to affect its magnetic field and that can affect the data that is on it. So that's why they would say don't put um, magnetic devices around your hard drive, around your tape and so on because it could um, disrupt the data that is on it. So the main point to remember, your magnetic data um, media stores the data magnetically. Whereas your optical disk stores the data using light and as somebody already said it uses a laser so the paragraph says that your optical disc can store much more data than magnetic media um that was more so in the past today your hard disc actually can store uh, more than optical disc um, these are three types of optical discs you have your compact disc drive also known as your optical disk drive because they use lasers to store and read the data. Remember once again, at any point in time you guys have a question, you can let me know. So continuing, you will already be very familiar with one type of compact disc, the audio CD that plays your favorite music. Um, another type of CD we also have CD-ROM, um, that is compact disc, read-only memory, and that has a memory size of 650 megabytes. So I think we need to continue our chart. So magnetic media, we're supposed to have other magnetic media. What are the two? Anyone? Magnetic tape and hard disk. So under your optical disk, you're going to have 
your regular CD-ROM and we should remember what CD-ROM stands for compact disk read-only memory so what is the compact disk used for the read-only memory compact disk but many computers use that as a form of playing music so they use it as an audio CD but the term CD-ROM is always taken to mean a CD format which is used to store data rather than audio track. So basically um, in computer, in IT, when we say CD, we usually mean an audio CD. And when we say CD-ROM, we are referring to when we're actually storing other types of data. Like for example, if you're going to store some sort of software on the CD, we would usually call it a CD-ROM. Now, the main point to remember is as ROM indicates, it is read-only. So CD-ROM means a, it's referring to a read-only memory. So you can put data on it only one time and only that one time and you could only read data from it afterwards. So you can only use the data after you would have written to it one time. So CD-ROMs can contain software or programs um, are of the write once, read many worm. So you write one time, you write once, but you can read many times from it. So it's just a one-time um, writing, like just like how you have music on a CD or a movie on a DVD, you can only view that movie. You can only listen to that song. You cannot add more movies. You cannot add more songs. It's just only writing once and reading many. So they cannot be changed once they are created. And that is what ROM basically means. So the major advantage of optical disks such as CD-ROM is that they can store significant amounts of data. Um, why they're using these words significant and that it's large is because back in the past, um, these amounts of data were actually large compared to um, what was there in the past. So, but we know today we have much larger storage than the 650 megabytes. Because we have flash drive today with what? 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, and so on. Now, the CDs can easily be damaged if they are exposed to light, heat, or dust. So, if you do not keep them safe, if you do not protect them, and they're exposed to too much light, too much heat, dust, even water, liquid, vapors, too much hum humidity, it can easily damage the disc. Now another type of CD is called the compact disc recordable, and we have the compact disc rewritable. So we can add those two to our this so we have cd r and we have cd rw so compact this rom compact this recordable and compact this rewritable uh, let me spell it out so that is zero Um, should be clear. Good. So what is the difference between the two? Um, both of them allows you to write data onto the disk. Compact disk recordable, compact disk rewritable allows you to write data. Unlike the read-only, unlike the ROM, which does not. But the difference between the two is that recordable only allows you to write one time. So you write one time to the disk, 
and it's because it's gonna become a CD-ROM after that, basically. So you gotta think of it um, this way. So a CD-ROM is something that you are going to buy. So say for example, you buy um, music to listen to, you're gonna buy it as a CD-ROM. So you buy that CD-ROM and you listen to the music. Now say you want to create your own CD. So you are going to buy a CD-R, which is a CD recordable. So that now you can, you can put your own music onto that CD. But it's going to become a CD-ROM after that because you can only write one time. Are you guys following so far? Yes, sir. Now the other one is a CD-RW. This one allows you to read and write as much times as you can. So it does not become a CD-R or a CD-ROM. It basically allows you to read and write until the disc basically fails or damages. So RW is only the only one that allows you to write information and you can delete and write again, delete and write again. So it functions like basically you're using a flash drive. So that is the difference between the three there. So however the data on the CDRW can also be erased as I told you guys. So many personal computers are sold with CDR drives, well that was in the past, so that you can regularly back up data saved on a hard disk. Now, I'm sure you guys know about DVD. A DVD stands for Digital Versatile Disk. So we can add that to our diagram also. So, a DVD, Digital Versatile Disk. So, a DVD is used for storing any kind of digital data, gaming software, um, stores much more data than a CD-ROM, so enough so that you can store an actual film. Now they replaced the VHS cassette, which would have been a magnetic tape, to store movies and so on. A DVD, um, DVD video holds video programs and is played in a DVD player, which is linked to a TV or a monitor. Notice we have the same DVD ROM, which is just like a CD ROM. It's going to have data on it but you can only read the data. Now the DVD had much larger capacity than the CD, so that's why you could have hold a movie or more data than a CD. Now let me just jump to this table at the bottom here. Um, DVD. Okay, I'm not scanning. So, after the DVD came the Blu-ray disc, so let me add that also, so Blu-ray disc, so the Blu-ray discs were designed to replace the DVD because it has a capacity of up to 100 gigabytes. So that's why the Blu-ray disc is used to store, hold um, higher qualities of movies because it can store much more data than a DVD. So when you are buying a very high quality movie or even a, a disc that has multiple movies on it, you're basically buying a Blu-ray disc. Um, other companies actually use the Blu-ray disc, like for example Sony, 
they use it for sharing their games. That's how um, the PS5 and the PS4, um, they have their games being stored on a disc. And it's also used for films of very high quality. So those are all of your optical storage. Are you guys following so far? Yes, sir, we're following. Okay, good. Anyone, any questions? No questions? All right, so our last local storage is the flash memory. The flash memory, one example, is your USB flash memory storage. So all of you may have one of these. We also call them jump drives, memory stick, flash drives. Those are all alternative name to the USB storage. So their capacity is typically around um, see this right paragraph yeah there are alternatives to hard drives because they can store more data and uh, because of their small size so you're going to typically find um, 8 gigabytes 256 gigabytes um, we have larger capacities of flash drives or flash storage they are mainly used for storing files and for backing up data and for transferring data between computers and they're actually faster than CDs, DVDs and so on that's why we use them for storage now flash memory drives combine the best features of memory devices described thus far they're stored for large amounts of data um, they're low cost, non-volatile, anybody remember what non-volatile means? It can be used without the use of internet. Internet? Is that correct? Um. You're heading in the right direction, but it's not internet. Something else. Use without something else. You can just eat. Oh, electricity. Right. So it can be used without electricity. So that is not volatile. Um, and electric electrically reprogrammable. So you can write data onto your flash drives and so on. So these drives have become increasingly common since there is standard types of USB connection with the computer. Um, so I guess I missed this part here because it was so common to me. Did you guys know USB stands for Universal Serial Bus? No, sir. Okay, great. Well, now you guys know. So flash memory, you're going to have USB drive, or we also call them flash drive. There's so many names for them. Some people call them thumb drives, drum drives, and so on. Now... We also have flash memory card. So these cards are inserted into your digital camera, your game console, your laptop, MP4 players, your phone. Um, so those um, SD cards that you guys have, those are flash memory cards. Now even your SIM card is a flash memory. Did you guys know that? That your SIM card is actually a storage? Yes, sir. What is this story? Yes, sir. Start storing phone numbers. Right. Um, flash memory card. So, under the flash memory card, you could have your SD card, um, your SIM card. So, it's not a, a large storage but it's still storing data. It's still storing a few contact information. And uh, it's not only storing contact information, it's actually storing information to connect to the network. 
that is um, using that SIM. So gt and Digicel, they're actually storing information on that SIM. Um, well, it says it right here also. It stores um, the phone's unique number along with data such as contact numbers. It can even store text messages. A few amounts of text message can be stored to that SIM. Anyone know what SIM stands for? Sir, subscriber identity model. Right, correct. I was hoping somebody was actually following along. So it's right here, subscriber identity module. So that is the acronym, the abbreviation for SIM. Um, continuing, these cards vary in size. So we're talking about flash memory cards now, not SIM cards. They're varying in size, so we can have memory cards from two gigabytes all the way to one terabyte. So some of you might have um, an eight gig, a 16 gig, a 32 in your phone right now. Great. So they're mainly used for storage. So there's the SD card. This one here is the SD card. And then we have the micro SD card. So the micro SD card, is the um, ones that you guys have in your phone. There are actually different types of SD cards. So the large one is what we call the SD card. And the small ones that you guys, or is it the micro? Yeah, it's the micro. The micro SD card. The one that you guys have in your phone, we call that a micro SD card. And the regular size one, that is a SD card. So, SIM SD and so you can have micro SD card. Yeah. So now for cloud-based storage, cloud-based storage involves storage of data by users on multiple computers anywhere in the world. So remember I explained that in the very beginning. Cloud-based storage, you're actually storing on somebody else's computer anywhere in the world. So the exact location of this data is not known by its owner. So you don't know where the data is being stored. All you know is being stored on the internet and it's on somebody's computer. But as I mentioned, it's usually on a company's computer. For example, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they actually have all of your data on their computer. So when you upload a picture, it's being stored on their computer. Um, sorry about that. So, what is the cloud now? So, as it mentions here, the cloud it is an unlimited and powerful remote network of interconnected specialized computer so that's just a lot of fancy words there um where is the image i downloaded so remember i showed you guys this here so the cloud is basically the internet all of these computers connected to each other that is basically the cloud the internet having all of those computers interconnected with each other so you use it to store your data whether it's your school work your photos your emails video and so on so um when you upload something to youtube when you upload something to your google drive and you're using the internet you are storing on the cloud but if you notice you need the internet in order to access the cloud so that's important to remember in order to access this form of storage you need the internet so, but why would we want to use the cloud? 
Well, we're going to use the cloud because it saves you from deleting data from your secondary storage. And I'm sure you guys are um, familiar with this. And when your phone is running out of storage, what do you guys start doing? When you start deleting your pictures, deleting your games, and so on from your phone? Yes, yes. Right. That's because your secondary storage is getting full. So that is why they invented cloud storage. So if your secondary storage is small and you don't have the ability to get more secondary storage, you can save it to the cloud. You can tell somebody to save this data for you so that is where you have your google photos your google drive your one drive and so on that will allow you to store your data so when you use cloud-based storage the data is not stored on a single remote computer somewhere in the world but it's actually being stored on a lot of different computers in the world. So, um, this is a bit technical in that, say for example, let me copy back this image and paste it here. What they're basically saying is that, say for example, Google. Google can have a computer here. I'm using another color. Google can have a computer here, you can have one here, one here, another one over here. So say, just say for example, they have four different computers around the world, each connected to each other. So when you store your picture on a Google Drive, your picture can either be here, it can be over here, it can be here, or it can even be on all of these computers. Because that is how they, the company, designs their cloud-based storage they actually have in backup of the data so they are actually making backup of their backup so when you are backing up your data to the cloud they are also backing up your data to another computer so when you upload something to the cloud you won't know the exact location because it could be on this computer here it could be on this one here, it could be on this one here, or it could even be on all of them. So you may never know. So that is why um, it's you're always warned about what you upload because when you upload something, it's not being sent to only one computer or one person. It's actually being sent to many computers, many devices at one time. So any person can gain access to any content you put up. So if one of the computers stops working, your data is still going to be stored on another. So that's the, um, the company backing up your data. So if this computer at the top here crashes, then you still can have the data from the other computers that are storing your data. Now, some cloud-based storage are actually free, like for example, Dropbox, Google Drive, and I would recommend that you guys start making use of them. It's just a simple sign up for an account. Um, you guys all have Gmail, so that means you already have a Google Drive account. Use it to back up your assignments, your homework, your schoolwork, anything that is important on these uh, cloud-based storage so that you can have them when you need them. Now, however, businesses pay to have their data stored in the cloud for easy access and backup purposes. So, easy access meaning that you can go anywhere in the world and be able to get the data. But remember, you once you have internet access. I can travel to India and I can still see my pictures on Google Photos because it's on the internet and not on a specific device. And companies use it to back up their data. So 
If you want more storage, users would have to pay for that extra storage. And they would charge you on how much data you are going to use. So with cloud-based storage, millions of people from anywhere in the world can interact with the application at the same time. Access to the data is immediate once they have access to the internet. And as with any type of data storage, there's always the risk of your data becoming accessed, deleted, stolen, or corrupted. So even though you're storing in the cloud, obviously somebody could break into any one of these computers and access your data. And that's a, um, a daily concern for a lot of people today. That they're storing their information on the cloud and somebody could easily access one of those computers and get their data. So, it doesn't mean that if you're storing your data in the cloud, it is automatically protected. So, users with similar email address can actually receive each other's messages. And storing sensitive data in the cloud can also be a security concern because of those hacking persons trying to hack your accounts to try to get their data. Um, this table here is basically a breakdown of all the information um, that we covered in the paragraph. Are you guys following so far? Yes, sir. All right, great. So we just concluded a chapter on um, secondary storage. We looked at what is secondary storage. Um, what were the examples? So. For cloud-based storage, um, but yeah, for cloud-based storage, we're gonna have examples like Google Drive, OneDrive. Is it one word? OneDrive and Dropbox. Well, obviously there are more examples, but these are just a few. Good. So those are some examples there of cloud-based storage. All right, so I think we're gonna end here for today. Or you guys want us to look at the other chapter? Responses. So, um, and end of this chapter. All right. So we end here for today. So the main points to remember of what we looked at for today. Please remember there are two types of storage: secondary and primary. We already learned what is primary. RAM. Um, the RAM that you have in your computer, that is primary memory. It is temporary and secondary is permanent. You gotta remember the difference between a storage device and a storage media. And uh, when it comes to storage, we have, uh, when it comes to secondary storage, there are two types, local and cloud. We looked at three examples or three types of local storage magnetic, optical, and flash. And uh, we looked at some examples of cloud-based storage there. Well, if you guys don't have any questions, we are going to end here for today. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye, sir.